guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, you already know what we're going to be doing. I've been so excited because I've had to patiently wait to finally get to unbox this pretty sizable stack of book mail. I mean, for me, I've accumulated a pretty sizable stack and I finally get to open all of them. I'm so excited, especially since some of these books I've been waiting months for. So without further ado, let's just start opening some packages, please. Um... I think I'm gonna start from, I'll just start from the top and slowly make my way down to the biggest box. I probably should have brought some scissors to make this easier. One moment. I didn't get scissors, but I got a box cutter. Okay, so let's open this first most colorful package that I got. I love it when Tango sellers send me books in these colorful packages. It has another cute packaging in it. Oh, this is so nice. So cute. It says thank you and I think this is a bookmark. Opening the little envelope. Oh. oh my gosh, so cute. It has some bookish stickers in them. Actually, I think I have this penguin, but I don't I don't have these ones. I think this one's my favorite. Look at that. Super cute. Wait, I got some stickers. Gonna put them back in the envelope. Okay, on to the book. All right, the first book that I unboxed is The Push by Ashley Audrey. Now, I've been hearing a lot of um, good stuff about this, and it's not that like I've heard like really overwhelmingly positive stuff. It's more like this book just keeps popping up when I watch YouTube. Like so many YouTubers have brought up reading this. I feel like this was the book that I was talking about um like people were relating it to what's that other book the perfect child by Lucinda Berry it's something to do with a creepy creepy child um okay so this mother basically has a new baby and she thinks that she's you know she has this this picture in her head that she's going to be the perfect mother she's gonna have the perfect relationship with her child but then she suddenly like as her child gets older she starts to realize that she thinks there's something wrong with her daughter and nobody seems to believe her. It's that trope where, you know, creepy child and nobody believes the woman. This, like Nobody believes that there's something wrong with the child. They think that something's wrong with the woman. So if this, it's kind of giving me the perfect child and what's that other one? I had to reach all the way to go look what book it was, Hidden Pictures. You know, I, I definitely have realized that I like the creepy child trope except for turn of the key that's i think that's the only one that i haven't liked so far but hopefully this will be a good one a nice psychological thriller with some creepy ass children okay first book down so this next one is another thriller or actually i think it's a horror more of a horror than a thriller it's a how to sell a haunted house by grady hendrix now this was definitely highly recommended by Haley Hughes. I think she's the one that said that this is like a contender for one of her favorite books of the year, even though it's like not even we're not even halfway through it. So that really definitely intrigued me. I think it's about a brother and sister who um, move back into their childhood home after their parents die, I believe. And I think they're trying to like pack it all up so they can sell it and then I guess some creepy things start to happen in this house. So I've definitely been craving a horror. I don't really have too many on my shelves right now and it's kind of bumming me out because when I'm feeling that itch to want to read a horror story, that's kind of the thing. I, I like watching scary movies but they scare me a little too much so I feel like the next best thing is to read a scary book because at least I don't see the images but I get the creepy story, the creepy plot, and the twists that come with it. So horror books are definitely the better of the two, in my humble opinion. Okay, let's get into the next one. I really like this blue color. The one by John Mars. So I think I was reading The Soulmate Equation. Forgot who it's by. Christina Lauren? Was it Christina Lauren? Yeah, The Soulmate Equation by Christina Lauren. And I was kind of disappointed with that book because it did focus more on, obviously, focus more on the romance because it is a romance book rather than the sci-fi aspect of it where they create some sort of DNA-based Tinder dating app where they use your DNA to find your perfect match. And that premise really intrigued me. 
I just didn't like the execution because it was a romance book. So when I heard there was a sci-fi version of that book that focused more on the sci-fi elements of it, I was hands down ready to buy this one. I might even push this into this this month's TV, TBR even though it wasn't isn't supposed to be there. Okay, let's open the next one. This one was also double wrapped. I love opening book mail. It really does feel like it's, you know, Christmas or my birthday or something, but it's like me gifting it to myself. Oh my gosh, I love how they like took so much care wrapping this up. Doreen's Faithful Used Books. I love that. Thank you, Doreen, for packaging this book so well. And it's Ninth House by Lee Bardugo. So I haven't been adding that many new, okay, new to me fantasy books. And this one kept coming up. I mean, it, it came out a while ago and the new, not the new, the sequel recently came out, Hellbent with the creepy rabbit on the front. And I was thinking, you know what? The second book's out. Maybe I should just give this a try. I mean, it, it has been piquing my interest. I just wasn't sure if I would like the... What is it the dark academia part of this but i know there's so i've heard that ninth house is about this girl named alex stern who kind of throws her life away on drugs and bad relationships and basically her life is going downhill until something traumatic happens i think she's involved in some multiple homicide and she's the only survivor so she's given a second chance by this prestigious university to get a full ride scholarship to go there and go back to school and maybe improve her life. The only catch is she has to use her special powers to kind of spy on the these secret societies that are all over this school filled with like the rich and powerful of this magical world. So I think there's like, of course, there's the paranormal fantastical elements. There's the mystery um of you know what's going on in this school maybe i think there's some deaths that are involved in here so i'm imagining there's some horrific elements also sprinkled in so hopefully i enjoyed this one i have enjoyed lee bardugo's other books you know obviously i've liked um what do you call it shadow and bone i don't know why i kept thinking of siege and store ruin and rising but i couldn't think of the first book so I know I like Lee Bardugo's writing, so hopefully I'll like her adult novel even more than her young adult ones. All right, next book. This is Get a Life, Chloe Brown by Talia Hibbert. And this is the first romance book that's on this list. And um, Get a Life, Chloe Brown, I think is like the first book in this series of books about these sisters who I guess find love but I'm trying to figure out what's Chloe Brown's thing. Oh, she's a chronically ill computer geek with a goal of planning the list. Okay, so Chloe Brown is like this, I guess, I don't know if she's really a recluse, but she hasn't really been living her life to the fullest in her mind. So when she like has a near death experience, she decides that she wants to create a bucket list and actually live her life. So she enlists the help of this bad boy-esque man named red morgan who's supposed to help her like hit all these things on her bucket list such as enjoying a drunken night out riding a motorcycle going camping having meaningless but thoroughly enjoyable sex and traveling the world of nothing but hand luggage and do something bad so those are some of the things on her getting a life bucket list and you know i'm not too sure if this is the brown sisters who i will enjoy um but you know had to start somewhere might as well start with the first book so hopefully i like chloe if i don't i might give another one of her sisters a try we shall see i've recently been really trying to give like romance books more of a shot because i mean typically i don't really enjoy books that are mainly focused on the romance like don't get me wrong i like books like fantasy books sci-fi books thrillers that have romance in it i just don't really typically like books that have romance as the main plot but you know i i haven't given up yet i still want to try hopefully i just maybe i just haven't found the right book yet you know <gasps> yay this finally came in so this is the book i've been waiting three months for this is heartstopper volume three and i feel really dumb because i read volume one 
read volume two and then immediately after reading volume two i wanted to order the next book but i mistakenly ordered volume four and didn't order volume three so i've had volume four for like two months now three months and i've been waiting for this since then so i'm super excited to finally continue on with this story um this is a graphic novel about two teenage boys who fall in love the first two were fairly light-hearted i mean they did go through some struggles of bullying and you know coming out to their family and their friends and all of those things but i think i've heard that the third and fourth book definitely get more like heavy get more in depth they definitely go through a lot more in the following um the following editions or volumes so i'm hoping i will continue to enjoy the series okay let's move on to the next one. Oh my gosh i almost thought i cut the book thank god i did not so this next book i read this so long ago maybe like over well over a year ago maybe two and i've only now ordered it because it wasn't my favorite by this author it's daisy jones and the six i don't even know do i need to introduce this book i mean this the tv show just recently came out so i feel like there's been a lot of hype surrounding this story but basically i really love taylor jenkins read i have a lot of her other books here i have the well at least the ones in the in her celebrity connected world books i have i love seven husbands of evelyn hugo which i think is my favorite closely followed by carrie soto's back and the malibu rising so this is the only one that i've been missing and i guess the reason why it took me so long to buy this one is because it's my least favorite i don't think it was badly written i just it's just the content and some of the tropes that were in here like the major plot points just didn't sit well with me and i did not like daisy jones like i don't like her as a person so it's very hard for me to like a book when i dislike the main character but when i really thought about it i love the book i just didn't like the main character so you can see how that can get confusing in my head but i eventually decided i should buy this because i kind of want to reread it i think the first time i read it i got it as a library book but i definitely want to add it to my shelf because i do think i can recommend it to a lot of people and lastly we are on to the biggest box that i got this is my order from barnes and noble so i got shadow and bone siege and storm and ruin and rising all by lee bardugo so you know i just bought nine house ninth house also but these i've already read and i really enjoyed them i actually unpopular opinion i like these more than i like six of crows the six of crows duology so i just thought it was crazy how i had six of six of crows on my shelves but i don't have these like make it make sense you know and i love how i got them all new and they are all paperbacks because i've come to realize that i think i like paperbacks a lot more than heart um heart covers all right the next one that i got is anxious people by frederick bachman so i think i've read a few books by frederick bachman and i think this is definitely one of my favorites i just really related to a lot of what was talked about in this book because i do feel like i am a definitely an anxious person so i really enjoyed relating to the characters in here and if you haven't heard frederick bachman's writing style is really beautiful in a way like it's not incredibly poetic or you know the prose isn't like super flowery it's more like how he writes flows really well oh my gosh i can't even i, I meant to do a wave um so his writing style just flows really well and some of the the phrases he chooses to put in here are just really quotable and really like resonate with you or resonate with me as a reader i've heard a lot of people really enjoy it as well um, I also love how a lot of his books feel very like heartwarming like they just make me feel something on the inside it's like watching a really nice but deep but tragic um, family movie sometimes what I feel when I'm reading his books not always family friendly material but that feeling that you get when you watch like a family movie that's very heartbreaking but also really happy and I've got two more books to show you guys before i um 
I have people coming over, so I got to make sure I get this done. Oh, okay. So the next book that I got was The Cruel Prince by Holly Black. So I've been hearing about the series a lot. I feel like it's one of those really popular fantasy, YA fantasy romances with phase and everything. But I mean, I read A Court of Thorns and Roses, which isn't YA, that's adult. But I mean, I feel like I was getting... Like from what I was hearing, this really reminded me of that. I thought A Court of Thorns and Roses was alright, but I've heard a lot of people really like this one. So I'm hoping, I have no idea. Do I know what it's about? Okay, so this story is about Jude who was taken away. Her and her sister were ta um, stolen away from the human world to join the Fey world by their father or uncle. I forgot. But anyway, after their parents are murdered, they get like kidnapped and brought to the Fey world where they have to now live, even though they're treated like crap by the Fey. So, especially by the prince of the Fey's, and I guess, you know, typical, the main character is probably gonna fall in love with the prince, even though he was really cruel to her. So, it's probably like a hate to love. Hopefully, it's not too bad because typically. I kind of roll my eyes at hate, hate to love unless it's done really well. So I'm hoping this is going to be one of the few that's actually done well. And the last book I have to show you guys is Once Upon a Broken Heart by Stephanie Garber. So this was really sold to me by Jamie's Library. Um, she said she read this like a few weeks ago and she really loved it. And I think this is about a woman who she finds her true love and she's set to marry him. But then I guess he breaks up with her and marries somebody else or is going to marry somebody else. So she strikes a deal with like a witch or something in order to stop the wedding. And I don't think it turns out quite how she plans it to. So I'm guessing something tragic probably happens and she has to undo the harm that she's caused. So I'm hoping I'll enjoy this one. Quite a few fantasy romances on this list, but I feel like it's a good mix between books that I've read and books that I've, I haven't read. And I really haven't gone on like um, a book shopping spree in so long. I feel like I have, usually I have this rule where I can't buy more books than I've read. And this whole year, I've definitely been buying a lot less than I've been reading each month. So I was really happy to finally let myself buy all these books. And I'm really looking forward to reading some of them and especially the ones that I've already read. I'm just excited to add them to my shelf. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Let me know down below what books you've recently bought or if you read any of these and enjoyed them. Let me know which ones and hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Bye!